Members, just before calling the Minister to make her statement, I would remind him Sorry, I remind her, sorry. That standing order 18A2 requires her to make a written copy of it available to members at least 30 minutes before delivering it to the Chamber. The Minister has failed to meet this requirement this morning. The Bill's Office only received the statement at 11.49. Therefore, in accordance with Standing Order 18A2, I would ask her to state the reason for, the, for this prior to making her statement. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, I, I apologise to the House for the lateness in supplying uh, the business office with my statement. It was, it was an administrative oversight on our part, um, and I will ensure that it, it doesn't happen again. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I have received a notice from the Minister of Justice that she wishes to make a statement. Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr Speaker, I wish to update members on matters relating to mental health in the Northern Ireland Prison Service following recent deaths in custody. Firstly, my thoughts and sympathy are with all those affected by recent deaths in McGabry Prison. Every death in custody is a tragedy. It is a tragedy for bereaved family and friends. It greatly affects prison staffs, particularly those officers who have worked with these vulnerable people and who have come to know them. It is a tra tragedy also for other inmates who are affected too. As Justice Minister, I take extremely seriously the responsibility placed on me to care for every individual in custody in Northern Ireland. It is a very sad fact that the prison population includes groups of highly vulnerable people, and for some, the confinement regime itself presents a significant burden on their mental health. Since November 2015, there have been five deaths in custody in Northern Ireland, four relating to mental health issues. On the 17th of November 2016, the prison population totaled 1,533. Of these, 417 were recorded as having a mental health illness and a further 740 prisoners recorded as having an addiction. This amounts to just over 75% of the prison population. The needs of those in prison are complex and in comparison to wider society, they are disproportionately higher numbers of prisoners who present with mental health problems and personality disorders. In addition, the problems associated with alcohol and substance misuse, mental illness and generally poor coping skills are all higher among the prison population. Research also tells us that people in custody are more likely to, either, um, to have either undiagnosed or unmet health needs. For many, their first mental health diagnosis occurs only when they are in custody. The prison service supports vulnerable prisoners through the Supporting Prisoners at Risk or SPAR process. This helps staff identify at an early stage behaviours that suggest a prisoner may be in personal crisis and in need of additional and immediate support and care. The emphasis is on individualised care of the prisoner and engagement to understand what is causing the distress. The SPAR process is designed to be a short-term crisis first aid management tool and is not des designed to provide long-term care or to address the underlying issues such as poor mental health or historical trauma. The process provides for an immediate plan for keeping the person safe, for a swift assessment of the concerns causing the crisis, and a pathway for longer-term interventions and support to prevent or reduce a recurrence. However we portray it, the custody environment is not designed to deal with those experiencing severe chronic mental health issues. Whatever level of training we provide to staff, they remain prison officers. The Northern Ireland Prison Service cannot meet this challenge alone. We need the ongoing help and support of the Department of Health, other departments and par partners across the justice system and in the wider community. Prison officers play a vital role in assessing and supporting vulnerable offenders during periods of crisis. Countless lives have been saved by prison officers who identify prisoners at risk and care for them successfully. We owe them a debt of gratitude for the work they do around the clock, keeping prisoners as safe as possible in a very challenging circumstances. The management of the prison service, governors and their teams work tirelessly to reduce the rate of self-harm and to prevent suicide. Identifying and supporting prisoners with mental health issues remains a high priority for the Northern Ireland Prison Service. However, not every episode of self-harm can be prevented and tragically some suicides will happen despite the best efforts of staff. The prison service and the South Eastern Health and Social Care Trust which delivers health care in prisons are committed to providing effective services to vulnerable people in custody. The Health Minister and I want to reassure the Assembly and the public that we are working together on this issue. 
Following the most recent tragic death at Magabri, a meeting was held on Friday the 18th of November to develop a community response plan. This followed the same model that is adopted when there are potential clusters of suicide in the community. The aim of using this approach is to detect a potential suicide cluster and thereby prevent further deaths by suicide. Full investigations into the circumstances of the recent deaths at Magabri are ongoing. And whilst it would be wrong to preempt the findings of the prisoner ombudsman's or a coroner's inquest, I believe that it is crucial to act immediately. I also believe this is the first time this model, which has been used successfully in the community, has been adopted in a prison in Northern Ireland. And the objectives from this work are to identify and support those potentially at risk through timely and coordinated support from all sectors, to coordinate local and additional resources through the response period, and to monitor and evaluate the response put in place. Furthermore, the prison service is also working in partnership with the Southeastern Trust, reviewing the suicide and self-harm policy. The new policy is still in development, but is likely to adopt a two-strand approach to the management of prisoners at risk. The first strand is called proportional response and encompasses the essence of providing keep safe care through positive staff engagement and immediate response and intervention if required. The second strand is called tailored support and will provide a multi-agency approach to prisoner specific medium to long term care. All mental health and therapeutic care streams will be managed in partnership with the South Eastern Health and Social Care Trust and is facilitated by the Northern Ireland Prison Service through tailored support. The Department of Health and the Department of Justice are continued to liaise in respect of a joint health care and criminal justice strategy, which covers the health and social care needs of people at all stages of the criminal justice journey, whether as suspects, defendants and those serving sentences in Northern Ireland. The draft criminal justice and health care strategy and action plan have been through consultation and an analysis of the responses has been completed to inform the final strategy. I believe that there is an ex this is an ex excellent example of how departments can work together and expect it to be finalised, agreed and brought forward for implementation as a matter of urgency. Minister O'Neill and I have agreed to conduct an immediate review of vulnerable people in custody. Officials from both departments are now working together to define the structure, scope and time frame of this review. And I know members appreciate the scale of this challenge in respect of mental health in prisons and need for joined up uh, partnership working to address that challenge. And I hope members will also agree that at a strategic and operational level, steps are already being taken to meet the, meet the needs of vulnerable individuals in custody. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Call Mr. Doug Bailey. Uh, Mr. Speaker, thank you. Um, I, I welcome this statement from the, the, the Justice Minister, uh, and, and, I, and I honestly believe she is working um, towards uh, dealing with this, uh, this issue. And it's good to see she's working with the Health Minister uh, to deal with this issue. Um, because it does need a joined up approach and, and that must be welcome and I've spoken to her on a number of occasions uh, and she is absolutely sincere uh, and I will applaud her for the work she has done so far uh, but I have to raise it and I have, as I have raised it before the SPAR process that she talks about is only effective if we have the right level and number um, of prison officers uh, and we are sadly lacking that um, uh, and I've raised this concern before and the Prison Officers Association has raised it with the First Minister uh, to say that they have an issue um, with their manning levels uh, and ask for action. That was on the 10th of October and I don't believe there has been any action. The other thing I would say as well, if I, if I could please, and this is to try and add value to it. Mr um, Beattie, can I ask you to come to the question? Sorry, uh, uh, sorry uh, to, to add value to it, has she considered um, a, a system of trauma risk management um, for immediate management of prison officers after an incident? I, uh, I thank the, the member for his questions and, and indeed his continued interest in this particular area and we have spoken on a number of occasions, uh, not least on the issues that he's raised with me today. So I do, I do welcome that, 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 that support. Um, in, in terms of the issues within prison and, and staffing, yes, there are issues in terms of staffing and it is something that, that has been talked to me about uh, some of uh, the, the, the representative organisations that I've met with and indeed we are trying to find ways on how we can better facilitate that. It won't be easy and it won't be an overnight challenge but I do, I do understand that there are serious consequences of it, so it is something that I do have focus on to give the member reassurance, uh, Mr. Speaker. Um, I am keen to support um, prison officers, and we've had a conversation on how I've, how I've been trying to do that in, in recent weeks. And indeed, um, I will announce in the next few weeks uh, further support for prison officers in terms of extending the police rehabilitation and retraining trust to both serving and retired prison officers to better help them with that. And I believe there will be uh, positive benefits of that. Um, namely, it will help with our sickness absence rates, and hopefully that will. Um, 
um, enable us to have our full uh, uh, quantity of, of prison officers so that we can better care for, for prisoners. But um, the, I, I'm pleased that the member recognises that it, it is something that I am keen to really uh, tackle. We do have a number of challenges. Um, I, I can't tackle these challenges overnight, regrettably so, but it's something that I am working towards and I'm keen to, to, to listen to prison officers as much as possible to see what we can do to move forward. I call the Chair of the Justice Committee, Mr Paul Frey. Mr Speaker, and I thank the Minister for her statement, albeit late. Uh, uh, and I welcome the, the uh, content of the report. The community response plan seems at common sense. Uh, the reviewing of the suicide and self-harm policy, and then also work on the draft criminal justice and health care strategy and action plan. But can I ask the Minister, even with that layer and a multi-layered uh, approach, uh, it is still the case that psychologist reports are being at worst ignored uh, and at the best left uncommunicated and the prescribing of medication and the dispensing of those, uh, those drugs are not getting down quick enough to the prisoner patient. Uh, can the Minister uh, reassure me in this House that that will be looked at uh, most seriously and urgently and also will these reviews and strategies and action plan help deal with the psychoactive substances? which we know is a real problem in our prisons and the desperate behaviour of the prisoners and their, uh, their state of their mental health. And also, out of all these policies and action plans, will there be ingrained through it support for the prison staff? Um, to, I suppose to address the last uh, question first, um, most absolutely there needs to be support for prison staff because ultimately anything that we do moving forward will begin with them and I've said that in this house many times before. Um, I think prison officers um, are critical in, in trying to address this particular problem so indeed I would seek to support them as much as I possibly can whether it's through training or for their own personal support. Um, uh, the member raises a, a, a valid point around the use of psychoactive substances as well as other uh, 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 drugs within prisons and alcohol misuse. It does contribute to a lot of the problems that we're seeing around mental health within prisons. Um, and I think um, that what I've announced today in terms of a, a review of vulnerable people in custody will certainly look to those particular issues. But it, it's something that, that I think we are keen to address. Uh, we know one death in custody is one too many. And you know, it is deeply regrettable that we've had two deaths you know, in a matter of a couple of weeks and indeed four over the past year. Um, the nature of prisons is that it is very, very challenging, um, but I want to be able to do you know, as much as I can to, to stop this happening again, but I'm, I'm not sure that would be the case. Ms. Michaela Boy. Um, can I thank the Minister, and I do welcome this collaborative approach. Um, Minister, what outcomes do you hope to achieve with the Health Minister and indeed with the um, criminal justice legal system? In, in relation to repeat offenders, um, those who are going through the revolving door process in our prisons, who are mainly young people um, that have mental health issues and a psychoactive substance addictions before they enter the prisons. Um, and when they enter the prisons, they're locked up for 23 hours of the day, most of them. And we heard that at the Justice Committee. Uh, Thursday past, and some of them are using these psychoactive substance as, a, as an escape and a release from being locked up 23 hours a day. Gormagat. I thank the, the member for her question. Indeed, I, I suppose what I would like to see out of uh, you know, this, this type of review and this collaborative working is that our approach to health and social care um, with people within the criminal justice system begins before, during and post their time within custody. Um, because I think the member's right to, to suggest that you know, we, we do have an incidence of, of re-offending because we're perhaps not putting in, the, or perhaps not most effectively putting in the appropriate supports for um, these people who find themselves within custody. Today. So what, whilst, once they go back out into the community, they, they're perhaps not getting support they were getting whilst they were in custody. Therefore, it, it's one of the, the vulnerabilities that's manifested when, when they come out. So I, I think this approach needs to be a holistic one. Um, it needs to be uh, between myself and the health minister, but also other agencies a, along the route. Um, and, and that's right throughout the criminal justice system, but also within the community too. Um, there needs to be that, that, that appropriate support in place. Um, and again, we, we do need to have a critical look um, at uh, at health, care, health and social care within prisons and indeed um, the work that the Minister, and I, or the Minister for Health and I will take forward, I, I hope that will reveal some of the, the areas that we, we can address effectively. 
Call Mr. Alex Atwood. Thank you, uh, Mr. Uh, Speaker. Uh, could I ask the, the Minister? Uh, last week, uh, during a long meeting, the Justice Committee looked at a report into one of the tragic incidents in the, in the prison, where it was confirmed, and Mr. Frew uh, indicated this, that it took eight days between a prisoner being prescribed an increase in medication and that being actioned. Now, given that there's meant to be joined up work between the health side and the prison side, if today the systems currently in place were stress test, are you confident that those sort of incidents would not arise again? And could I ask the Minister to give a guarantee that in taking forward the Community Response Plan, that she involves in that work people from the independent third sector, voluntary and community organisations who are dealing with self-harm self and suicide at the front line, and not just involve those who represent the public bodies? I, I thank the member for his question. Um, I, I absolutely, I think we can do better in terms of the working between the Northern Ireland Prison Service and the South Eastern and Health, uh, Health and Social Care Trust that provides the health care within uh, my, my prisons. But indeed, I, I will say that since becoming Minister and the relationship that I have with the Health Minister, there has been that increase in partnership working. Um, and I think even in respect of the programme for government, and how, you know, when we talk about collaborative working, there is very much that essence of moving forward. So I do think we're in a much better place than we ever were before in terms of working together. Indeed, what we're announcing today is that we're going to strengthen that even more so because I do think we, do, we need to be mindful of the fact that when, whilst people are in our custody, they should have the same access to any health and social care as they would if they were outside of custody because that's, that, you know, in, in my mind, that's their basic rights. So I think um, moving forward, there's a real opportunity here to try and get this right so that uh, people within custody are, are getting uh, the, the best... Um, uh, service that they um, are, are entitled to, essentially. Um, to come back to the, the community and voluntary sector, absolutely. Um, I, I think the community is not just the statutory organisations, it's the communities they will go back into them, and certainly the community and voluntary sector, I believe, are best placed to, to provide that support because they know the, these people best, they know their communities best, and I think there's a real strength in the community and voluntary sector along with this work, so yes, I can give that assurance. Call Mr Trevor Long. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I thank the Minister for her statement. Uh, the, the statement refers to proportional response and uh, the need for immediate response and intervention if required. In, in the recent case of self-harm, prison staff and senior staff stood by for over half an hour and watched while a man slashed his own groin and then blinded himself manually. Is, is the Minister satisfied that whatever comes out of this uh, review that prison staff will be encouraged to take the initiative and take responsibility when required and stop this sort of thing if, if it's being observed, rather than wait for somebody to give them guidance. Minister. Um, I would certainly hope that whatever does come out of this review, that um, we, we can provide more of an immediate response so that we don't have incidents happening like the, the, the member describes. Um, but again, this has to be a holistic approach in how we tackle this. It needs to be um, given officers the, the right training and skills in terms of how they can deal with it in an immediate environment, but also looking at the health care side of this to ensure that we don't get to that point. So um, again, it has to be a, a full uh, uh, review in terms of uh, mental health within prisons and indeed on a day-to-day -day, you know we are saving lives within our prison service also and that you know that can't be overlooked um, but I do think there's more work can be done which is why I think this review is coming at a very uh, appropriate point. Thank you. I call Pam Cameron. Thank you Mr Deputy Speaker and uh, can I very much welcome this statement from the Minister of Justice this morning. Um, at committee on Thursday, we had a very lengthy meeting um, of almost five hours, and two of those hours, I believe it was two hours, were spent um, in actually uh, speaking to the Health Trust on the um, Sean Lynch case of serious self-harm. Um, during that meeting, uh, there was a psychiatrist, a Dr. Bones, and um, I asked him about the psychoactive uh, substances, and I was quite distressed to. Uh, realise that um, the mental health is kind of a, an additional factor to these substances because I did ask specifically that, um, that if um, a prisoner did not present mental health issues 
and uh, took these substances, could the outcome be the same? And the answer was yes. So my question to you, Minister, is um, how will you rid um, the present state of these substances which are attacking brains, which was the answer I was given? Um, I, I thank the member for her question. Um, and yes, psychoactive substances are, you know, completely dangerous. And you know, d do you have the, the, the repercussions that you know, you've suggested too? Um, I think tackling uh, drugs and alcohol misuse within our prison is a challenge. And indeed, in, in, in recent occasions, um, they conducted even an amnesty to, to, to see if we could um, rid prisons of these. Uh, to be honest, I suppose the point of that amnesty in itself was really to highlight the danger of these particular, these particular substances. So I suppose in terms of um, educating prisoners of, these, of the use of these um, and other um, uh, procedures that we're putting in place in terms of people bringing uh, substance into prisons, um, it, it's something that, that we do need to look at to strengthen. But I, I'm assured at this stage that we're doing what we can. But you know, I, I do take the point um, about psychoactive stu substances. And the two very much do go hand in hand, um, whether it's misuse of drugs, but also mental health problems too. I think it is something we need to look at and it will form part of the, the review that we've announced today. Thank you. I call Raymond McCartney. Okay, the last one, Kohler. Uh, first of all, I, I don't think anybody can you know, overstate the complexity of the issue in relation to what we're dealing with here. But with that in mind, I'm just wondering, and the last question, Tim, I mentioned about the assessment as, as prisoners are coming in, particularly mm -hmm. into McGabry, is it uh, effective enough? But also in terms of, of resource and use of resource, the ANOR's prison review team were very, very specific that better deployment of resources could be brought into place with the three many prisons within McGabry. I have stated before that I think this proposal has been at best ignored, but a, de a degree of resistance around it. So would the Minister revisit that and perhaps that would allow her some resource as she goes forward? Minister. Um, I, I, I thank the member for his question. Indeed, the, the SPAR process, um, as I've already outlined, is, is indeed a, a very immediate, short-term approach to how we tackle uh, mental health within prisons. Um, and it, it was never intended to provide a long-term solution with dealing uh, with prisoners um, in our care. Um, and certainly, any approach taken forward, I think we do need to have more of a focus in terms of uh, um, prisoners that present with mental health problems. You know, 75% is not an insignificant number. It's, it's something that we do need to take very seriously. Um, and indeed, I would hope that the review that we've announced today, alongside the Minister of Health, will take into account how we can best tackle this moving forward. So yes, I, uh, indeed, I, I'm keen to look uh, to see uh, what we need to put in place to, to, uh, to ensure that this isn't as much of a problem in the future. I call Mr. Sammy Douglas. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. I thank the Minister for her uh, statement thus far. Um, my, my colleague earlier on mentioned about the, the psycholog psychologist report be there either being ignored or at best not being committed. Could the Minister give the House an assurance that during this review, which I certainly welcome, that she will look at this particularly um, difficult area? Minister. Um, yes, I, I certainly can give that assurance. Um, I, I think we do need to look at this particular area. It's, it's deeply complex and, and how we uh, can best address this. And I am quite happy to, to take as full a review as we need to around this particular issue because, um, yes, and, and if that includes the report or anything further, I'm quite happy to do that. Thank you. I call Mr. Robbie Butler. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, thank you, Minister, for your statement. And indeed, I welcome many of the short term measures that you've embarked on, especially in conjunction with the Health Minister. Um, you did talk about the uh, lack of training, perhaps, uh, and appropriateness for prison officers to look after people that have been diagnosed with mental health issues. That notwithstanding, those subject to custodial sentences will find themselves uh, looked after uh, by prison officers. Um, with regard to the training aspect, and specifically the induction training that our prison staff get, would you be satisfied that that would be appropriate at the moment? And if not, would you be looking to address that in the short term as well? Minister. Thank the, the member for his uh, question. Um, I, I'm quite happy to look at it, and indeed, uh, in the immediate um, aftermath of the most recent deaths, it's, it's something that we've, um, we've, we've sharpened our focus on the current training to try and understand um, if, if it is appropriate in terms of what we, we can do just so that this doesn't happen again in the short term. Um, but I think we need to take um, a wider view, review around the training of prison officers. But you know, as I, as I said in my statement, 
it will not be for prison officers alone to tackle this particular issue. Prison officers, you know, are, are there to do a job in terms of caring for people within custody. But we, we need to very much uh, coincide this work with, with the, the service that the, the, the trust um, provides uh, in terms of health and social care within our prisons too. But again, I, I think it's, it's appropriate that we look at this as part of this review, see if there's anything we can do, because a lot of this does. But, you know, I, I believe we, we need to... We need to better support prison officers in the job they do so they can better care for the prisoner, prisoners within, within custody. Um, so I, I'm happy to look at that from the perspective of looking after prisoners, but most of all for, for, uh, for supporting prison officers in their job. Thank you. I call Mr. Edwin Foote. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Deputy Speaker. I um, understand uh, your apology, Minister. I'm sure it wasn't, nothing whatsoever to do with you uh, that the statement wasn't got in time. Uh, but uh, in terms of this particular issue, um, obviously you inherited a circumstance where um, there wasn't uh, as many prison officers on the ground as there should be. And does the Minister recognise the importance um, that we do have an adequate number of prison officers, both in the interest of the prison prisoners and indeed the prison staff, because the mental health issue is not purely about the prisoners here, because of the stress that many people are working under? Uh, there are severe mental health issues uh, for many prison officers who are out sick at this moment in time. Minister. Uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker, I very much recognise that we do have uh, challenges within the prison service, um, particularly around the sickness absences of prison officers. So I, I am keen to look at that and address this. Um, you know, for, for me, I, I want to understand the problems uh, within my within my prison so that I can uh, best uh, address them. And you know, I, I have been speaking with um, the various representative bodies, and they have outlined these concerns with me. It's not something that I can tackle overnight, um, and but it is something that I'm giving uh, immediate focus to. And, and will hopefully be able to get some satisfactory outcomes as soon as possible. Thank you. I call Paula Bradshaw. Thank you, Deputy Speaker, and thank you, Minister, for your statement this morning. I, I think it's very encouraging. Um, I want to focus in on those prisoners who are engaging in the process. As people will know, with mental health issues, you know, obviously there's the low mood, and it's very hard to engage, let alone sustain your engagement in therapies and support services. How are you going to tackle the wider cultural issue within the prisons in terms of making the responsibility of the mental health of prisoners everybody's business? Minister. Um, I, th I thank the member for her question. I, I think for the fact that we've had an awful lot of focus uh, since I've become minister around mental health in prisons is, you know, demonstrates my commitment to trying to make this an issue that is very much on everybody's um, agenda and, and it is a priority for everyone. Um, because, you know, you, you raise a very uh, important point um, around the complexities of mental health in prisons about those who engage in the process and those who do not. And I think that's where the difficulties uh, with tackling mental health in prisons, you know, to, to an extent come in. But, you know, I believe that we do need to take um, perhaps a more holistic um, view of this around the, the health and social care that you know that happens within prisons and um, indeed working with the, with the health minister moving forward it's something that I, I do think we need to have a focus on but um, definitely if I can give an assurance to this house and to the member it, it is something that, that we need to have a focus on 75 percent I'll reiterate again is is not an insignificant number in fact it's quite a significant number um, and it, it would be remiss of us not to put a focus on this so it's, it's something that I'm keen to do moving forward and I hope my statement has confirmed that to the house thank you I call Mr Roy Beggs thank you Mr Deputy Speaker the recent prison ombudsman's report indicated that drugs misuse uh, is, uh, has been a, a factor and indeed uh, uh, that is an issue which officials on Thursday at the Justice Committee highlighted was inhibiting uh, clinicians and mental health professionals in treating prisoners. So can I ask the Minister, does she recognise that there are regional variations in preferences for drugs? But we apparently have a regime which followed the Scottish model where uh, um, cocaine and opiates uh, had a higher preference and that there have been trends in drugs, drugs, drugs misuse in our prisons with particularly psychoactive substances becoming more prominent and will she ensure that we have modern technology with appropriate testing, testing for the drugs which are causing the problem? Yes, sir. 
I, th I thank the, the member for, for raising this issue. You know, and, and indeed, you know that there are, is a problem with drugs within prisons, but also outside of prisons, uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker. But um, I, I think he's right to suggest that we need to have a focus on it. We very much have to uh, tailor make our, our approach in terms of addressing drugs within prison, quite specific to Northern Ireland, because as the member point, rightly points out, um, the, the, the geographical preference in terms of drugs would be different to Northern Ireland as it would be to other parts of the United Kingdom. But no, I, I, I'm quite happy to look at this because I do recognise it's a problem, particularly because it does go hand in hand with mental health issues. And in terms of doing a review, it would be remiss of us not to look at the, the problems around substance misuse um, uh, whilst looking at mental health uh, problems. Thank you. I call Mr David Ford. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, can I also thank the Minister for her statement and in particular welcome her references to the commitment of the Minister of Health to work closely with her on these issues, something which is not always the case in the relatively recent past. Can I specifically ask the Minister whether the scope of the review which she has indicated today will include a specific issue on the potential establishment of a secure psychiatric facility or whether it will solely deal with the existing prison facilities? Minister. Um, at this stage, it's very early stages in terms of the review that we, we intend to take forward. Um, but indeed, I think we need to look at all opportunities and options, uh, you know, within our um, within, within our remits to, to, to understand how we can best uh, address this particular problem. So it, it, it's not something that we won't be looking at. Um, but indeed, of, of what we, we take forward as part of this review, we need to look at everything and understand what's best for Northern Ireland. If I call Mr. Raymond McCann. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Uh, I put it to the Minister that there has been uh, you know, a very broad welcome around uh, the House this morning for a, the statement that she has made. Uh, but uh, does she understand that uh, out in the community, as we say, there will be many people who take this with a pinch of salt because they will get the feeling that we've been here before, that there have been tragedies and scandals and promises of uh, investigations and statements that lessons have been learned, and yet the same thing happens again, as we've seen in recent days. So uh, could the Minister explain, given that we've had all this praise for prison officers, uh, could you explain what consideration of staffing can explain the fact that prison officers watched while one prisoner used his thumbs to gouge his eyes out and others have killed themselves? Why can't they be held to account the same as any other public service? I think in terms of supporting prison officers, isn't it arguable that prison officers in Northern Ireland have received a bit too much support too automatically when we should be looking more objectively at these things. Minister. Um, no, certainly not. I think up until this stage, you know, I think we need to better support prison officers, and this is not just about uh, prison officers in itself, you know, in terms of my saying to do this. I think if we better support prison officers, then indeed we'll better support prisoners within our care, and I, I believe that's where it begins, because ultimately, you know, they're on the day-to-day -day forefront of, of uh, looking after um, these individuals within custody. Um, Indeed, I, I can assure the House, I've never been um, in front of this House and announcing a review as, as such as this today. Um, and I, I am keen to take it forward. It's a discussion that features regularly within this House and it would be um, irresponsible of me as Minister not to address it in a, in a robust and, a, and efficient way because one death is, is, is one death far too many and I certainly don't want that you know, on my conscience to, to not have done anything about it, um, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker. So I, I can assure the member that I am taking this forward in a, in a, a very serious um, uh, approach um, alongside the, the, the Minister of Health, but I, I don't think we can highlight um, individuals in terms of the wrongs or rights of this. I think we need to take a, an entirely holistic approach around this. And I do, you know, I, I will reiterate, I do think that begins by supporting uh, prison officers because then they will better care for uh, prisoners within our custody.